it's taken ne nearly 50 years to uh, get where we are today in reference to cancer of unknown primary site. Uh, the, it's accelerated, however, in the last 10 to 15 years with the advent of uh, additional diagnostic pathologic uh, testing, particularly immunohistochemistry, as well as uh, molecular testing with molecular cancer classifier assays. We know now, uh, although there remains some contention, that nearly all patients uh, with cancer of unknown primary site have metastasis from a primary that is just too small to find on clinical examination. Yet post-mortem exams show that the majority of these patients uh, indeed do have small primaries. The reason for this remains somewhat unknown, how such a small cancer can metastasize and then the metastasis grow and the patient presents with metastasis, yet you can't find the primary. Keep in mind, uh, nearly all of them have a primary. It's just too small to find. We've learned, uh, again, by studying the metastasis in these patients, uh, mainly with immunohistochemistry and now molecular cancer classifier assays, that they are a compilation, these patients, of many different cancers. Some of the more common cancer types, uh, such as lung, uh, breast, gastrointestinal, are among others probably at least 30, perhaps even more, types of cancer are represented in this clinical syndrome. So we've also learned, and it's slowly evolving, that treatment of these patients, once you learn the tissue of origin, uh, the results of the therapy is quite similar to treating patients with known advanced cancer who have obvious primary sites. For instance, a patient who presents with metastasis and a biopsy and molecular classifier, if needed, diagnoses the tissue of origin as an adenocarcinoma of the lung. Treatment along the, these lines uh, produce similar results. Uh, we need more data, and this is coming forth. We've learned that several subsets of patients are more likely to do well. We call these favorable subsets. We've learned about these over the past many years, and now we're learning about others. Again, because we can diagnose the tissue of origin in most of these patients by the combination of the clinical features, the pathology, including the immunohistochemistry, which is now done in panels and can often be quite highly suggestive of the cancer type, and if necessary, a molecular cancer classifier assay. We've also learned that patients with cancer of unknown primary site have many genetic alterations. These are detected by comprehensive molecular profiling, which is different than a molecular cancer classifier assay. And there are many different genetic alterations which are seen. In my opinion, this just represents all the, the cancers that make up the uh, cup or cancer of unknown primary syndrome. Uh, you would expect certain uh, alterations in lung cancer, in breast cancer, in uh, GE junction, and gastric cancer, et cetera. And we see these in unknown primary, and uh, many times they correlate with uh, the actual type of cancer the patient has. So I think we've uh, made some major headway in learning what type of cancers these patients have, and then learning to treat them according to the cancer type similar to what, how we treat patients with known primary cancer.